Hey now, we are back. We are into the B's with Hall of Fame autographs. Very exciting. We made it through the A's. So first up is Frank Home Run Baker. So before we look at his autograph, a couple of things about Frank Baker. Uh, he lived until 1963. He got the name Home Run, not because he was a tremendous home run hitter, although he was for his time. He led the league, I believe, four years in a row. I have wrote it down from 1911 to 1914, 40 years. But he got the name Home Run from the 1911 World Series, where he hit two crucial home runs, and he could see even on his plaque. To, uh, both the home runs in those games were game-winning home runs. So that's where he got his name. So when you're looking for Frank Baker's autograph, uh, he's not a tough Hall of Famer. Like you said, he got inducted in 19, I believe, 55, passed away in 1963, had a stroke in, like, 61. But until then, he was a great signer. A lot of people wrote to his autograph. And he was great through the mail. He was like in that window where, like, he was a, like I said, a great signer. He was very easily accessible. Everyone knew how to get a hold of him. So, I had a couple of Frank uh, Baker autographs. This is the one that's currently in my collection right now. Hold on, let's take a look at it. So this is the Frank. Oh, you know, I don't like the way this one looks. Let's go to this instead. There we go. This is my Frank Baker right here. Uh, as you could see, well, it was Frank Baker. And again, the J, I guess, is not perfect. This has cut signature. This is a postcard. I wasn't going to buy it if it wasn't a postcard. But the postcard was looked like it was trimmed maybe a little bit right here. So Frank Baker was really good about signing his autograph. A lot of times when you look for his autograph, he will, if it was like a postcard, he would put like home run or you put the fact that it was with the Yankees or the Philadelphia he says American League Baseball Club right here, as opposed to the Phillies, who's with the Athletics. So, okay, because he's part of the million, uh, sorry, $100,000 outfield. So, you want to look for a postcard that has some nice inscriptions in it. These are not terribly expensive, like $300 to maybe $500. Like I said, they're, they're out there. They're common. Uh, and, again, he has a nice flow. Like, he had, took a lot of pride in his signature. I like – usually with the R's, it's, like, stretched out a little bit down, and it falls off at the end. So if we go to the PSA autograph database, take a look here. Let's see. Uh, again, you can see right here. This is an earlier autograph. He started with – again, it flows really nice here. The R right here in Baker. In the beginning of his career, he went up before he started going down. But, again, it still has a really nice flow to it. Uh, moving on here, uh, this one's tough to see. Let's go to another one here. So, again, this is a signed baseball. Signed baseball is, again, very rare in any regard. Uh, this is the 1917 baseball. I'm not doubting that it's real or not, but again, they're rare. But think about Frank Baker, an autograph. You won't see him on a sweet spot. Uh, I personally avoid baseballs altogether. Now, if you see one with him on it and it has, like, a lot of writing, I would feel more comfortable about it. Or a multi-signed ball. He signed quite a bit. Uh, when he went to charity games, or like I said, he's with the, uh, at the Hall of Fame. But again, it's always on a side panel. I you'll never see him that I could think of on a sweet spot by himself. Again, this is a beautiful autograph. My guess is on a postcard. Very common inscription here: American League Baseball Club, full J. Franklin Baker. This is a signed check. Now, checks for him cuts are very common. You could probably pick them up under three hundred dollars, but again, usually when you see them, they're cut. There's only probably a handful, five maybe full signed checks that are out there. So you're going to pay over a thousand dollars for a full signed check, as opposed to here. This is a well, you can see the nineteen twenty one. This is an earlier check, so the R was sort of like going up still before it went back down. Uh, right here, another very rare check. Again, very early in his lifetime, sort of 1922. Again, the R was still going up before it dragged back down. Uh, again, another one here. You can see now the R starting to come down. But again, this is the 1924, another early signature, 1925. Again, look how beautiful his penmanship is. Now, we're going to talk the post-stroke signatures in a second here. I mean, yeah, here you can see this is 1951 later on. Uh, this is probably signed in person. Well, they're all in person. But again, you probably the person, not through the mail in person. But you see it comes down and goes straight down like that. Again, another beautiful signature right here. Beautiful signature right here. Frank Baker. Again, I look for the J usually. Very rarely will you see the John. Uh, gorgeous sign letter. So, I mean, I hope you're getting the idea. Again, look at that. There should be no hesitation, no breaks, lots of flow. And again, if you go to the Heritage right here, they have you can take a look and get an idea of what his stuff goes for. 
Uh, oh, government postcard. This one from, uh, let's see, 2007, $836. But again, this is fairly old. I think his price has actually come down for a nice signed postcard. If we go, we can probably sort this via most recent sales. Go right here. Hopefully, it'll come up right here. So let's take a look. I see a postcard right here coming up. So again, here is a, like a for $372 is a gorgeous signed index card. Uh, again, this is what the checks look like. I'm just going to pull this up. Again, this is a little high, probably because of the letter itself. But again, oh, yeah, it's a signed letter and a signed check. So most signed cut checks, when you're looking at them, they're from this type of check stock. I can't zoom in much more. I wonder if I can zoom it in. Yeah, I can. So you see how, like, it has this, like, at the bottom right here, this whatever this stock is. This is a very common stock for him right here. This is what you want to look for. So... Again, you saw mine. You saw this. I want to show you a couple items that are considered bad. And I also want to talk about this post-stroke signature and why I would never buy one. So here is a signature. I know it's by JSA. Ron calls this as out. I sort of can see it, actually, to be honest. If you look closely, the baker, again, this was signed later in life because it's on a postcard. And these are more common to be forged because of the fact they're more valuable and a forger would know that. And that B just looks like it's really just odd. It doesn't flow real nice. It's actually like a hard stop right there. And again, if you look at his other bakers, it's a nice loop. Uh, and this is just like, it looks like he's, whoever did this, you see how it's not flowing. It's like very solid lines down here. I'm trying to, I can't get that. But it just, again, it doesn't flow real nice. It should be more circular, not as straight, especially in that baker. So, again, you look at mine right here. It's like it fl I don't know if you can see that flow of what I'm talking about. You can look at this baker right here. It flows. There's no sharp just like cuts like that one is. So, real quickly here, and this is a very uncommon. So, this is a – I want to show this baker right here. This is supposed to be a – supposedly he had a stroke in 1961. And he did sign because he was so good through the middle. He did sign other autographs with his uh, – I want to say his left hand if he was a righty. With his other non – uh, whatever, hand, yeah, whatever. But uh, this is a fake. It turned out to be a fake because there was a big uh, forgery ring that was discovered. People were taking T206 cards, breaking them out of their holders, signing them, getting them re-slabbed, and then selling for real. You can see right here, this is like clearly, here's the before card in a holder. You can see the crease in the crease right here. And now it has a Frank Baker. And it's so shaky but since he had a stroke, they said, oh, yeah, he was real shaky, which he was after 1961 or whenever his stroke was. So the forger was smart. They only forged very expensive items, most commonly baseball cards, which have since exploded in value. So I would just say if you see a shaky baker, I don't care if it has a TPA or not. I would definitely stay away from that. And the final baker I wanted to show you is, and I wish I took a better picture of this. This is in some collection in Florida. This is the uh, like the biggest baseball collection in the world to sign baseballs. It's some guy, you can look it up, he has a Guinness record, but unfortunately it is littered with fakes. I went to take a picture of this. This had to be taken, God, at least 10 years ago. But you can see this is a pre-stroke, and I know it's blurry, but you can see even here it's not smooth. The baker came to a hard stop right there. This is a Coach's Corner special. You can see it's wrapped in plastic. Maybe you can't see, but trust me, it was wrapped in plastic. So clear signs of Coach's Corner. Uh, I'll do a whole thing about them one day. Bottom line is if you see Coach's Corner, run. Don't walk away from the autograph. So that's about it with Franklin Baker. Like I said, he's not a tough autograph at all. Uh, my guess is a lot of you that collect them probably have them in your collection. But if not, let me know. Uh, next, we're going to do Dave Bancroft, uh, late Hall of Famer, probably got in via cronyism. We could talk about that then. But until then, as always, keep collecting.